What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here back again with another video. I had to make a video on this. You guys knew that I had to talk about this as a Leaf fan. So if you are a new Leaf fan to this channel and you love just news talk, rumor talk, anything about the Leafs, a podcast, I've been saying it for a while, but it's coming soon. Um, make sure to go check out all my other videos and like and subscribe to this channel. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. I'd love to have you guys here. Um, but I, I need excuse me, I need to talk about Austin Matthews and uh, what a lot of people are calling not a true 50 goal in 50 game stretch, which is kind of confusing to me. So let's lay this out because I'm sure a lot of people have been hearing about this on Twitter. So obviously Austin Matthews has 51 goals in his last 50 games played. And when there was graphics put on the screen and when people were tweeting about it, about it being 50 and 50, Twitter blew up. And m most, more specifically, it was Montreal Canadiens fans and Edmonton Oilers fans. Now, I'm not going to lump them all into the same conversation here or the same group because I don't believe all fans are the exact same and should be put together like that because that's something that is done to Toronto Maple Leaf fans on a regular basis. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because... I was surprised by how much negativity there was surrounding this because the definition kept getting pulled up that 50 goals in 50 games is to start a season, a player scoring 50 goals in their first 50 games of the season, which let me tell you something, that is very true. 50 goals in 50 games, uh, there is a definition for it and it is the first 50 games of the season, a player scores 50 goals, which is absolutely iconic, amazing, whatever. But for me, and I'm sure a lot of other people, none of us are going by the book in terms of that definition. We're trying to talk about the fact that Matthews just has 51 goals in his last 50 games played, which is an unbelievable stretch. Matthews' production has been so pro prolific of late that his performance are graded on a curve. A serious night for all, but a handful of NHLers is a goal maybe too. Matthews, who on Saturday became only the 13th player in history to score 50 goals over a 50-game stretch and has four hat tricks since December 1st. Now, Matthews is averaging 0.87 goals per game, which ties him with legends Phil Esposito and Yari Curry for the 20th highest rate of all time with a minimum of 50 games. Now, Matthews, who is 24, obviously is on pace for 67 goals in 77 games, which would be the greatest goal scoring campaign since Mario Lemieux's preposterous 69 goals in 70 games in the 95 96 season. Now, First of all, Mario Lemieux, insane. 69 in 70 games played is ridiculous. But Matthews being on pace for 67, which is a crazy number in itself, in 77 contests, in 77 games, is what they're, what they're saying. That's insane to me. But the fact that he's not getting the credit from a lot of people because he didn't do it in the first 50 games of the season is just flooring like I don't I really just don't understand I really don't get it because why are we not talking and celebrating the 51 goals in his last 50 games and I get it it's it's fans of other fan bases and they and they're really not wanting to give Matthews this credit because for some reason a lot of people hate Matthews because he's a leaf more specifically because if this was somebody else it, it probably would be loved by the masses but the whole argument is that in his first 50 games, he didn't have 50 goals. That's that's true. He didn't. But I don't understand why that's what the sticking point is for everybody and why people are so, you know, irritated. Now, I want to show you, I know a lot of people don't like advanced statistics, but Matthews is just absolutely killing every statistic that you can think of defense offense it doesn't matter what it is so much so that his market value on here is 22 million dollars a year which clearly is not probably accurate um, I would think it's probably more in the 15 to 16 million dollar range which seems crazy but it just goes to show you all of these projections are based off of being a star basically um, or being top of the league 
When you look at stats, Matthews has 99 points. That ranks him fourth in the entire NHL, tied with Johnny Gaudreau, who's having a wicked season as well. And obviously in goals, he's got eight more than Leon Dreisaitl. And he's been playing, uh, he's played in less games than a lot of the guys that are on this list. Like people seem to forget Matthews actually um, was injured for a few games uh, and didn't play, isn't on pace to play the full 82, obviously because he's already missed um, a few games. But one thing, and, and I don't want people to take this to heart because I know there's a lot of people that are upset over this. And I think that there's, which to me, I still can't even believe that I'm saying that because it just sounds ridiculous that people would be upset over somebody putting on an absolute clinic in goal scoring, um, people being upset over 51 goals in 50 games. But if you're a fan of another team, I need you to take this with a grain of salt. This is something that I was explaining to one of my friends at work today, and he definitely agreed with me. But the Toronto Maple Leafs have a very, very wide fan base that stretches to other countries, not just other cities, but literally to other countries around the world. They have probably the biggest fan base in all of hockey. I understand that there are a lot of toxic and Homer fans that are Leaf fans. But you have to understand there's more of those fans because there's more of us in general. There's more fans. And there's a lot of good where there's a lot of bad. And there, there's like that for teams like Carolina, for Calgary, for Arizona, for, for Boston, for Vegas. It doesn't matter. You're going to have toxic fans. You're going to have these homer fans in every single fan base. But there's not going to be as many in places like Arizona or other teams that don't have the biggest fan base. And that's not a diss. I'm literally just stating the facts. If there's more fans, there's going to be more bad. If you have more food, there's going to be more bad food. If you have more chairs, there's going to be broken, more broken chairs within those chairs. It doesn't matter what it is. There's going to be always going to be a healthy balance of bad and good no matter where you go but because the Leafs have such a big fan base you're hearing more toxic people because there's just more of us in general and the media coverage and everything like that is this is how I explain it if you go to a grocery store right and the hot item is chicken and it's selling like crazy the store is not gonna put grapes instead of the chicken at the front of the store. No, they're going to put the chicken there because they want it to sell. They're going to promote the chicken. They're not going to put grapes there. It, if it's not selling as well, they're not going to put the grapes there. It makes no sense. So if the Toronto Maple Leafs are selling and people are buying into it and there's more people listening and there's more people watching, of course they're going to promote that. It's about money. People seem to forget that this is a business and businesses and big corporations do not pander to the crowd all the time when it comes to that and they don't feel bad they they want to make money they don't feel bad for anybody they want to make the most money and leaf fans bring money that's that's just it that's the the cold hard truth they talk about montreal a lot there's a lot of montreal based networks there's a lot of new york based networks because those teams and those cities and those places draw attention it doesn't matter what sport it is the New York Knicks, they could be the worst team in the league and they're still going to get all that popularity, right? The New York Yankees, it doesn't matter if the Yankees are in first or last place. They're always going to get that attention because they're the freaking New York Yankees. Aaron Judge could recite the alphabet backwards and it would be the hottest thing in baseball for the entire year because he's Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees. That's just how it is. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are popular because they're the center of the hockey universe. Whether you like it or not, that's the truth. And this is not a diss. I love the game. I love every team. Um, love's a strong word. I have respect and like a lot of teams. I love some teams. And of course, I have the absolute most love and respect for my favorite team, the Toronto Maple Leafs. But you have to understand, this is a business and... There is also a side of this that people don't care. They need to make money. And the reason why Matthews gets media coverage and the reason why, you know, people care so much about the Toronto Maple Leafs and so much gets posted about it is because it's a money maker. It's a smart marketing trick. If I, if Apple has a new iPhone, they're not putting a Blackberry at the front of their store. It makes no sense. They're going to promote the biggest product and the best product that they think is 
what's going to make them the most money. And that's what they're doing with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, one thing I want to add here too, and, and this is actually serious, and I'm sure players have even thought about this at some point. They must. If fans of other teams focus more on their own team, they would probably have more popularity and have a little bit more to talk about. But it seems like some people are so fixated on other teams, not just the Toronto Maple Leafs, but whoever they're hating at the time, that they forget about their own favorite team. Show that extra love and support to your favorite team. Give them that love and respect that, that you're, you're wasting negative energy on other teams. It makes no sense to me. That's why I stopped making videos on all other teams because... First of all, I was getting hate because I'm a Leaf fan giving my opinion, which was comical in itself. And if you need the proof, I could show you. And two, I wanted to put all my attention into the Toronto Maple Leafs negatively or positively. I wanted to focus on the team that I love the most. And obviously, it's the Leafs. So um, all of this ties together because I think that people just hate Matthews because they hate the Leafs and the attention that it's getting. But if you can't respect 51 goals in his last 50 games and a guy that's probably going to score 60 plus goals, not not he is a knock on wood, but he's going to score 60 plus goals. I'm putting the bet at 65 goals. I think he's going to go on an absolute tear and he still he has a chance at 70. Who knows? But let me know what you guys think down below. If you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad. Shout out to Austin Matthews. Big game tonight. Um, love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.